he liked this guy the moment they signed him. It was a done deal as long as Sam just could walk straight and chew gum. But now we get to see it. And I, I always say when everyone's like, well, we're bound to see the backup quarterbacks. I hate that mindset because then it's like other teams don't have that mindset. But for whatever reason, the 49ers, they always play multiple quarterbacks. Always. <laughs> always. It's why it's hard to envision them with a quote-unquote franchise quarterback. Like these other teams with franchise quarterbacks, like Josh Allen just plays. Mahomes just plays. Lamar just plays. Like, I just, that Lamar's is, been hurt. I, Lamar's been hurt quite a bit. I know, but still he plays way more than he doesn't yeah, play. yeah. He plays more I mean, than nine yeah. quarterbacks play. Yeah. Herbert. Herbert's probably a better example than Lamar. Just always plays. Even Joe Burrows, like even when he gets injured, he finds a way to get back on the field for the game. Right. And for the Niners now, I mean, if you had to bet, because I think it's very fair to assume that Sam Darnold plays, if you had to put the over-under on Sam Darnold starts this year, at, if I put it at one and a half, I wouldn't you take the over? Yeah, I would. And now it helps that they have the buy coming after the Cincinnati game. If they didn't have the buy after the Cincinnati game, that would be part of the conversation right now, right? Is how many games he is he going to miss? The fact that he's already better October 25th than he was October 24th makes you think that two weeks from now he'll be okay enough to play. But you don't, you know, do you think the league would allow it if in two days, like he's passing the protocol? Um, or they changed the protocol where it's so hard. Yeah, it feels pass. like maybe they've changed the protocol. Now, Kyle said, like, hey, if he's cleared, he didn't say it this way, but basically what he said, I don't care if he doesn't practice. If he's cleared, he's going um, well, to start. Kyle, Kyle's wired like it's 1981, and Tom Landry and Parcells and uh, Buddy Ryan. Like, Kyle would play. If you got concussed yesterday, and this is his football mindset, he'd play tomorrow. <laughs> right? I'm just That's just the way he is with football. He's an old soul. And I'm not, I'm, he's no, I mean, Sean Payton, Andy, Belichick, they're, they're all, they're very numb to this all. You just become very numb to it. You just do. Because they've seen carted off, shattered legs, shattered arms. That You just, I could never get numb to it. Just because I, I always went to the mindset of like, well, we're fucked without that guy. Not that I, you're not, you understand people are getting injured. They're just numb to it all. Do you think it has to do with the fact that you were making Fifty thousand dollars, and they're making you know at the time. Do you think like financial no, I, I think security I, has to do with it? No, I, I think there's a level of the more longer you do something, there are things in that business that you are completely unfazed by. Yeah, just completely. Like if you get to anyone in any industry that has you know construction, I've seen it first. The constant delays, people, the people running construction projects are just ready to argue. Like they just they know it's coming. If you're not used to it, it's just like, what is going on? Yeah, this is unacceptable. That's a bad example. Right. Yeah, it's just like, what, what are you no, going to say? Actually, sir, right? it's very acceptable. This is what happens. You must accept right. it. That, that's a bad example, but there's just, I just think you get numb to things in any industry you're in over time that you are completely unfazed by. And uh, unfazed is the wrong word. Obviously, if you're if certain players go down, it impacts you like emotionally in your in your mood. But like you just get used to just kind of moving on. Jeff Schwartz always says, like, move the drill, move the drill. Right. Like, <laughs> the guy's getting off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's where that is not true. It's like, well, there are, depending on the team, some teams have two guys, some teams have 10 guys. If Trent Williams goes down, it's carted off a field in August, the practice is ending. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> now, if Trent Williams, if the four string left tackle goes down, practice is not only not ending, you might not even move the drills. Like, get this yeah. guy out of here and let's, let's go. Going. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Keep your mind get set. Moving, keep focused. Get stay focused. Keep it Next working. We got up. another hour and a half left. Come on. Get a, get a sip right now. Get a, get a water break. <laughs> There's an open so, yeah. spot. There's an open spot. <laughs> Next man up is a cliche for a reason, right? Cause it really is how they operate. Um, Kyle said, let's talk about Darnold. Kyle said today, he's never, I think the way he put it was basically, he's never been more comfortable with a player that he hasn't coached in a game than he is with Sam Darnold. He's great in the meetings. He comes ready in practice. He was great in, in you know, in camp. Loves him. And as somebody, I, I got to tell you, John, I feel a little like we talked a lot about this guy and we wondered, would we see him? And I was very intrigued. In the preseason. And I got to tell you, the more I watch Brock, the more I I really, I do wonder. 
I doubt that Sam Darnold sees it as well as Brock, quote unquote, sees it. Because I think Brock sees it really well. But he does other things well. So this is this is make no mistake. What was the quote the other day from um Greg Olson about PJ Walker? What did he say about him? He said, remember he said a good game here is worth five years in the league for PJ Walker. Well, this is this is a, a big moment in Sam Donald's career on Sunday if it goes like it's trending, which is he starts for the Niners. I'll say this. Let's use Deshaun Watson as an example. He's got two guys who have been defending him now for three or four years, which feels to me, you know, I don't know if you saw, you see Quincy Avery and Brady Quinn getting into it. Did I see and, Quincy Avery and Brady <laughs> Quinn get into it, John? And, and I, I often think, like, if you're going to die on a hill, like if you're Dak Prescott's uh, quarterback coach or Kirk Cousins, I could see going online and yapping back at people that and defending that. Right? You feel great about the guy and you think, like, this guy's getting a rot. This guy's way better than any of you realize, right? And no one can ever talk about any off the field. I always think it's kind of weird to die on the Deshaun Watson Hill. Yeah. It's clearly weird. And like, bro, it's like, he's like, that's a, that's a low hanging fruit joke. No, it's a real joke. He tried to get a handy from every fucking chick that gave massages in Texas. Like, I'm sorry. No one looks at your player the same way ever again. Like, that's weird, bro. Like, I'm sorry. So yeah, Brady Quinn was taking a shot because he should, because that happened. And there's no one is ever forgetting that. I'm sorry, buddy, but like when Carson Palmer's brother, Jordan, I would say is a big defender of Sam, right? Loves that guy has been, I, he feels like he's very, very close with Sam and Josh. Well, he doesn't have to defend Josh that often. Josh, a star player is one of the stalwarts of the league in terms of marketing and more famous guys in the league, even when he's up and down, like no one's totally shitting on Josh because the next game he can throw four or five touchdowns. If you are coming to Sam's defense, and I've heard him do this, right? He goes, well, look who he's played with. Look who's coached him. Give him an opportunity. Give him this. And he has this now. That, that's what, what we said about the reason the guy that he Wally pipped. It wasn't even a Wally pip. He just passed, right? It's like, how does it get any better? Get one of the better play callers. You get, yeah. even with Debo, broken shoulder, had no problem waving yesterday to the crowd uh, at Oracle or Chase. But... Debo's out. Who, okay, who cares? You still got Ayuk, who's a $100 million receiver. Kittle's one of the best tight ends of his generation. Christian McCaffrey is a superstar. Juwan Jennings is, wait till you see his contract in a couple years. Someone, you know, who's desperate for a receiver gives him Yeah, it'll three be more than Kendrick five million. Bourne, who, haven't seen Kendrick Bourne in a while. <clears throat> I think he's making plays for Bill. I, he he did time. make a play last year. <laughs> he did. So they got, there are no excuses with this team of, let's see it. And I'm, I'm not going to like stamp, like I'm expecting 300 plus yards and a win, but I am, I am positively intrigued. And I, I would expect, as I was told when Robert Sala interviewed for the Jets and told them they were going to keep Sam Darnold, his selling point was the key to this offense and this is why we complained last week, you can't run it more than you throw it or have that mindset 24-7, 365 when you're losing, what Kyle does, is we our pass-to-run ratio leans run, and then the passes, 25 to 30 attempts max, uh, 15 of those are easy, are easy. Even if the guy's in his face, you can just throw it away. It's not, you're not trouble throws. It's really 10 throws, give or take, a game that you really got to decipher and do. Where where if you play for Andy, it's like 80% of those throws are pressure-packed, right? Or you watch the Bills and how Josh plays. It's not layup throws or layup plays. This is. So it, it is a massive moment for this guy. I think it's a big moment for Kyle, too, because he does well, looks well. Told you, motherfucker, so. Shut you know, up. You know, you just made me think, John. Got me a little riled up, but also made me think, you know, there was a an alternative universe where Trey Lance is starting for the 49ers this week to try and with their backs against the wall, right? I, I don't think that universe has existed since March 15th, though. Hasn't since they acquired Sam. Is, I, if he was healthy or... Well, you know, I guess what, maybe the better way to put it, you're right. But there's also just this was the conversation right throughout training yeah. camp is what if this moment arrives 
who's more ready for it. And if Sam can't do it now with this team, then it's then he's, he can't do it, right? Yeah. No, he doesn't have Debo. He's got plenty more. And the, the, the rest of the league, though, viewed the other guy as a third string. No one was willing to make him their backup quarterback, right? The entire NFL after being drafted third. No one was willing to trade a pick to make him their backup quarterback and a backup quarterback in this league is clearly worth a fourth round pick, right? right. Every right. team in the league. If I told you, I give you a backup quarterback that you could win a game with every GM in the league from the best quarterbacks, to the shittiest quarterbacks, give you a fourth round pick without hesitation. And they clearly like, God didn't see this one coming. <laughs> they admitted it. The league admitted it. So it's like, there's like two separate conversations because the league valued this guy as a, not a backup, a third stringer. And then Sam was just polarizing. People just, I think, argue, is he any good? Yeah, some people argue he's that, that it's not a question, that he's just not any good, right? He Kyle stays. Shanahan feels yeah. differently. Clearly. Um, and Kyle, this is kind of Kyle's wheelhouse, right? I, I didn't watch the press conference. I think that's – that's the one thing with Purdy, and I would say Sam too, he is not afraid to say pretty bold things. Like That's a pretty bold thing to say. Yeah. I mean, he's coachable. I mean, how long has the guy been fucking coaching in the NFL well, as like a coordinator slash head coach? I mean, he likes him as much as he's liked a guy that he ha- that that he that hasn't actually played in a game for him. But he's had a lot of those players over the years. Jalen right? Hurd. I'm just saying, like, either they're in training camp or oh, early yeah. in the season before the guy gets to but play. Every quarterback like, does play for him. Every guy in the roster eventually gets onto the field. So he's saying, I actually didn't have that much faith in CJ and Nick Mullins. I don't, yeah, I mean, it, well, he maybe he loved CJ until he played, right? Now we've got CJ with hindsight being 2020. He might change that opinion on Darnold if Darnold throws three picks against the Bengals, who, by the way, he'll change it. We, we can save Bengals stuff for tomorrow, but scored two, like had two awesome drives against Seattle and didn't score another touchdown last two weeks ago. Um, but, uh, you know, that was, an ugly, that was an ugly game. It was an ugly game. But Sam, uh, Anytime another elf in the room. Did you see Deshaun's out? They're getting PJ Walker. I mean, they they yeah. could easily win at home. So Seattle, all of a sudden, yep. <laughs> you, you fuck up this Sam Darnold throws three picks. All of a sudden, we look up. Niners are in second place. <laughs> that, yeah. that would be bananas, wouldn't it? Niners are in second place. You go into the bye. You've lost three straight. Darnold ain't that guy. And Purdy, you're waiting to find out is he going to come back out of this concussion protocol. Here's the thing, man. Life comes like, in fast. Brock didn't. Brock didn't get a concussion with the Niners at seven and L. Brock got a concussion coming off two losses. So I thought Brock played well. I did a video, a quick video on Wednesday morning, John sports center, NFL live had this like Brock's first five games first Brock's last two games stats side by side, but it's really stupid because when you look at the stats, his Vikings game, is much closer to the first five games he played than it is the Browns game. Like the Browns numbers were so bad, 44% completions, four and a half yards per attempt, that it pulls down the Vikings numbers. But the Vikings numbers from a completion percentage and from a y- yards per attempt was like nine. Completion percentage. Was he like 19 was- to 24? I mean, yeah, he was, was good. So the, the now five minutes left the game, he throws two picks. But like statistically, it was closer to the first five games than it was the Browns game. But my point is, the Niners are 0-2. He's got a concussion. Here comes Sam Darnold. So I don't want to jump too far ahead of ourselves. It'd be a good problem for them to have. I think the worst thing is Sam doesn't play well. They lose to the Bengals. And the easiest thing is Sam plays fine and they win, but no one's talking about Sam. They would take that right now, right? 100%. Sam's just doesn't matter how to win the game. Sam could, they If you told him Sam is 9-25 to with four picks, but they win the game, Take it. Yeah. You got to get to the bye six and two. You feel really good, all things considered. But there's just the second you get hurt, and it happened already once, and Trey could not walk through that door, right? With Jimmy. Jimmy was gone. Trey could not walk through that door. Um, if Darnold walks through that door, we'll see. We'll see what and the does, net, you're what, saying what, and does and does well. And does well. Then Here's the thing with the Niners. I was just thinking about listening to you talk. If you just compare them to the Eagles, I think internally the Eagles is an intense environment, right? It's just the pressure, 
how he's just intense. He's the boss. You know, all coaches are kind of intense, but when your GM is also kind of maniacal in a good way, I mean, he's obviously really good at his job, but it's just, it's an intense office environment. Like it's just tense. I've been there. I know people there. It And it's clearly reaps a lot of positive rewards. I think the Niners, you know, Kyle's intense, but like I said, most coaches are kind of on tilt during the season, whether you're winning, losing, it's just, it's an intense sport, but their GM and just Jed, it's just kind of normal. Other than that, you know, John is going for jogs with his assistant GM. It's just you probably just have a cup of coffee with a fan, you know, just, they're just very friendly, but the, the things around player wise <laughs> that happen are just constantly bananas with this team. I mean, bananas. You can't. It's not that weird of a story for a guy to get concussion symptoms after a game. Happens all the time. You see it, I'd say, once every other week in the NFL. A guy's like experienced some symptoms. It's happened a lot. Maybe not once every other week, but it's minimum happened five, six times, I would say, this year. So that's, that's not that weird. But it is weird given the next guy, how they got to the next guy, the comments he's already making about the next guy. For as good as Purdy's been, he definitely ain't on scholarship. Then if this guy is good and fucking Kyle actually loved him way before he ever loved Purdy, what happens? Only a one-year contract. You just see how things could just kind of grow in weirdness. In a pause, you can be winning and things can stay weird. The Niners have lived through that. Hell, going back to Harbaugh, I would say this generation of the Jed York ownership when the teams have been good, have lived in weird football while being successful, which is very abnormal because most teams that kind of live in that world typically underachieve, don't have winning records, and then it just falls apart. Somehow the 49ers kind of thrive in football chaos 